Okay. So back to the mission again. So we had ex- we had uh, extensively looked at Ain Tzaddin, um, the uh, the problem of of fishing on Yantif. I, I do want to just point out something that maybe I should have made clearer before. Um, we talked about the Yerushalmi and the Yerushalmi's claim that it's only permitted to do malacha lochal nefesh milisha ve'elach. Um, and we went with the Rishonim who said, well, that proves to you that you can't fish on Yom Tov because fishing is not mili shava elach. Now that works according to Tosvos who thinks that fishing is kotzer. Um, but the truth is that mili shava elach only makes any sense when you're talking about sidura de pas. And in the process of making bread, <coughs> so there, there's the list, right? You know, zareya, choresh, choresh zareya, the Gemara has that discussion. Um, and in, you know, in that list, you have I think it's eleven malachos that have to do with with uh, making bread. And the Gemara says in that list, it's Elisha Ve'lach. But the truth is, Sud is not even in that list because it's not in Sidura Depas. So actually, applying the Rushalmi to Tzad is a bit complicated. Um, and that's really what's behind the Ramban's Shita that Elisha Ve'lach doesn't mean. Leash only in Sidur de Pas, it's what that represents. That only from the stage in the processes, which, which is about processing food rather than obtaining food. So you sort of take the conceptual background of Mili Shavelach and then you apply it across uh, the board. So that's just a point that, that um, should be made. Okay. But then the Gemara had said, they know in the Mizonos, that you don't give food to the animals um, either on Yom Tov. Aval, Sadin Chayev Ofa, Of Min Habibrin, etc. But you can hunt and fish from these enclosed places, um, and that is what we've seen. But we had skipped over this question of the Ein Nosen Lifnehem Mizono. So the question we really need to ask is why can't you feed the animals, and what is the connection between Clause 1 and Clause 2? I mean, when we say you can't fish, on Yom Tov, and then we say, and you can't give food to them, are those two different statements? Are those two related sta- statements? Um, if they're related, how related are they? Um, and that is the source of an extensive machlokas Rishonim. So if you look at Rashi, Rashi says, Ve'ein nosnen lifnei hadogim mizonos. So Rashi says, you don't give them food. So Rashi says that these two things are not related. And he says, why can't you feed fish? So he says something quite striking, which is that we've seen earlier on that there was a machlokas in the Gemara, ochel nefesh. When we say that you can do malacha on Yom Tov, um, does that include animals or not? And we saw a machlokas on uh, Dav Chafalif, whether the limitation is from non-Jews or from animals, right? Is it that you can only feed Jews and not non-Jews, or you can only do malacha for Jews, meaning human beings, and not um, for animals? So Rashi says that this is connected, presumably, to that sugya, um, though not dependent on it entirely. Meaning what? So, you know, actually, you know what? Before we fully flesh out Rashi. Look at the Balamor. The Balamor, number two here, takes the simple equation. And he says this has nothing to do with Seda. This has to do with pure feeding. And he says as follows, um, says that which the Rif Paskins, like Rabiosi Aglili, that is forbidden to, um, to cook, let's say, for animals... I don't agree. Why don't I agree? So the first reason is that in that sugya, if you remember, the Gemara there had a whole discussion of throwing um, these 
uh, these um, leftovers on the on the the, the table. The uh, what? A souffle. Yeah. Right. <laughs> to the to the to the animals. And we're at all types of answers. What's going on? But it's, he says it's very dachut. Right, it's very, the, the answers aren't compelling and therefore we don't bask in that way. It got already, it was these, you know, pits, if you remember. So he said, well, maybe they're not mukta because they're, you can burn them. Um, yeah, Besides for that whole discussion, the Mishnah says, Says well, the um, we also learn in the Mishnah that you're allowed to cut up a an avela, an animal that died, to give it to animals, even on Shabbos and Shon Yom Tov. Mizonos, and you're allowed to fish certain type of types of animals, um, and you're allowed to give them food. So you see that you're allowed to feed animals on Yom Tov. Now, the Balmor, right, seems to, to think that from the fact that you can uh, give food to the animals, um, so that means that we paskin that lochem velo leklavim, wait, we paskin against lochem velo leklavim. You're allowed to feed food to animals on Yom Tov. He says, "Heich ish or litkos kol elu mishnah mishnah yechida." This is klavim shenishtanes shenishnei skerbios yaglili avgav grara deiru v'shitu bracha v'zimun v'chala matzo pesach. So, how are you going to reject all these other proofs um, in favor of one Gemara that sounds like we do paskin like Rios yaglili? So, the Balamor thinks that the fact that you're allowed to feed animals proves that. Um, we paskin that Ochel Nefesh includes animals on Yom Tov. Now Rashi also thinks that the question of whether or not you can feed animal, animals is related to the Ochel Nefesh question, but in a different way. Right? He says, again, Rashi had said, Ve'en but you can't give them food. And he said, even if you think you are allowed to feed them, Rashi says, what's the difference? So the Balamora derived from our sugya that the fact that you're allowed to give certain animals, not all animals, but any animals food, teaches you that we paskin, that Ochel Nefesh includes animals. Well, let's come back to how he understands why you can't give certain animals. But he said the fact that you give animals at all food proves that we paskin ochel nevish applies to animals. Rashi says no. Even if you think that nefesh behema is included in ochel nefesh, that's only animals that are yours. Because your animals, you're responsible for. If you're responsible for, so then, according to the position that Ochel Nefesh includes animals, you have to feed them. But fish don't need you. Fish can eat the, the other fish. They can eat the vet, you know, algae or whatever they eat, the vegetation and the water, and therefore they don't need you. And if they don't need you, there's no heter for Ochel Nefesh. So, what you see from Rashi is that he thinks that these are two completely different sugyas. He thinks, Ein sadin dagin min abibarim biyom tov is a problem of efshar mi be'od yom. And Ein nosin of nemizonos for fish as opposed to animals, right? Animals he's going to think you can in the, in the bibar, at least, is because ochel nefesh is limited to animals under your control, even to the position that Ochel Nefesh Bemashma. And what's implied by Rashi is that let's say you paskin like Rabiosi Haglili, that Lochem Lolaklavim, that Ochel Nefesh doesn't include animals, so then you wouldn't even need to explain this, right? You wouldn't be able to feed them at all, right? Meaning what Rashi is implying is that if you paskin that Nefesh be, that Nevesh Behema is excluded from Ochel Nefesh, then presumably, not only can't you give Mizonos to the fish that you, um, sorry, Rashi thinks, 
Right, right. Raji is saying that even according to the sheet of things that you that ochel nefesh does include animals, he won't allow you to feed fish. And maybe why? Because because he says, what is ochel nefesh? Oh, right. Ochel nefesh is you're only allowed to feed those who need it. But fish don't need it. So clause one of Ein Sadin is a problem of Efshar, Efshar, Mibod Yom. And Ein Nosin is a question of is it within Ochel Nefesh or not? Fish, he says, are never Ochel Nefesh, according to anybody. What? If in a tank? what? So presumably in a tank, right? Something like that. He might actually think. So according to Rashi, probably, you'd have to wonder, right? It would probably be that according to Rashi, fish in a fish tank, according to, so he would say it depends. If you paskin, that nefesh behema b'mashma, you could feed them. If you bask in, a nefesh behema b'mashma, you couldn't. Right now, the Balamor looks at this sugya and says the opposite. Right, a nos of name bizonos, only under certain circumstances, and tells you. But the fact that sometimes you can give them proves that we bechal don't bask in nefesh behema is excluded from ochal nefesh. And therefore, he implies that it must be a totally different problem. But Rashi just bites that bullet and says, no, this sugya is about Ochel Nefesh. It's about Ochel Nefesh. Right? The Balamor says, if it were about Neve- Ochel Nefesh, it would prove that we don't paskin. Yeah? If I have an animal that I, I don't have, I'm not feeding them to trap them, and whatever food I'm going to give them isn't muksa, it was already cooked before Yantif and Shabbos, What's the issue ah, of feeding them? Perfect. Now, with the big problem with Rashi, right? So, again, Rashi Shita, right? So, the first question he asks is okay, is there a connection between clause one and clause two? Rashi answers the question and says no, right? Ain Sadin is a problem of Ochel Navesh, Efshar, Efshar, Mimbodio. Not feeding animals not in your control, right, or fish at all, is a problem of Ochel Nefesh because you're only allowed to feed. Any right? If you hold ochel nefesh b'ma, ain't no ochel nefesh b'ma. Ochel nefesh does not include animals, so then you can't feed any animals, presumably. If you pasuk it, if you have to cook it, uh, well, hold that thought, right? If you hold, according to Rashi, that um, no nefesh behema b'mashma, he says still, um, if they don't need you, you couldn't feed them at all. But the big kasha that everybody asks is exactly what Alan said: is wait a second, Let's take a step back. What are you even talking about? I get Rashi doesn't connect clause one and clause two, but what? Why do I need ochel nefesh? What exactly am I talking about here? Meaning ochel nefesh means I violated a malacha. Ochel nefesh means I'm allowed to do malacha for food. Where does Rashi, or for that matter, the Balamor, get off? Rashi uses our sugya to to make a claim about the limits of ochel nefesh. The Balamor. At least agrees with Rashi that if you are allowed to feed animals, that proves something about Ochel Nefesh. But take a step back. What are you talking about? We're not talking. What are you cooking for the fish, right? You're throwing bread or you're throwing fish food to them. What? What are you talking about? How is this? For Rashi, right? How is it for Rashi? It usher Misham Ochel Nefesh, and how according to Balamor to the fact that we allow you to feed any animals prove anything about Ochel Nefesh? We're not talking about a malacha here, right? Everyone just looks at this and says, "What are you even talking about?" I don't even know how we got into this discussion. Unless you connect, what? Unless you connect. Ah, but right now he hasn't, right? So we're going to see. That's. But let's start with Rashi, right? First, Rashi disconnects. Great, that much I get. But what is Rashi talking about? It just—it's—it's—it's—it's it's, it's, it's almost impossible to fathom what he's what he's even saying. So, what she's saying, the fish is not under your. Domain. Yeah, but so what? What malach are you doing? It's not a malach. Well, unless it's part of catching it. And ah, but he doesn't think that, that, right? Yeah. Tosos thinks that. We're going to come back to it, but Tosos doesn't think that. Tosos, Rashi just says it's fundamentally problematic because of Ochel Nevish. We're going to see. Other Rashi's are going to say it's Muksa. Other ones say it's Tircha, right? So some are going to say it's, right? Rashi in one place is going to say it's Tircha and it's Muksa. And uh, Tosas are going to say it's Xer, we shouldn't say that. We're going to see all these positions. But Rashi right here and the Balamor both think that this Sugya in some way speaks to Ochel Nefesh. So you have two approach. You have two ways of dealing with this. One way is to say, in Echonami, it must be he's talking about whether it was Malacha. Now, what malacha is there? Right, fish food. Like, what are you doing? So, well, so 
um, let me just find where I put this. Mm -hmm. oh, here, 12. I put it in 12. In 12, the Maharam says, um, there must be a malacha, right? He agrees with Alan. He says, I don't know what Rashi's talking about. Meaning, <laughs> Rashi's telling you that you can't feed fish because they're not under the Hederochel Nevis. Or the Balamor, on the other hand, says, oh, the fact that you could feed fish proves that the Paskin that Ochel Nevis does apply um, to animals. So he said, it must be, you're talking about where you did a malacha. What malacha? You probably don't cook for fish. He said, okay, but you... So what's the obvious one that he's going to jump to? Hotzah. Must be that they're outside and you're in Rosh Hashanah. And the Gemara is assuming they... The problem is that you're going to be taking the food from your house into the pond. And the pond's in Rishos Harabim. On Yantif? On Yantif. And that's the problem. Right? Rashi isn't telling you, but according to that, the Maram says that even Rashi would be Mode, that let's say this was a stream in your backyard and it was fenced in or something. It'd be fine. Right? He can't fathom. Like, what is Rashi talking about? So this is Maram in number 12. Says Rashi, Yesh Ladaktik. When is Rashi talking about that it's usser because of ochel nefesh to feed animals that aren't under your auspices that you don't have responsibility towards? Hainuk show says a malacha, but take on machalon. It must be you violated malacha. Kagona, fia. Maybe you baked. I mean, maybe you did. Maybe you baked a loaf of bread. Your fish love bread. I don't know, right? Ubishal, you cooked for them. my What are you doing? Maybe Rashi just means that that it's also to do a malacha. It doesn't mean you can't feed them. doesn't mean you can't feed them. You can feed fish on Yom Tov. It means you can't cook food for fish, or you can't carry. Or he says, maybe simply throwing into the stream itself is also because it's a caramelist. It's not Daraisa, right? Because there isn't, a, there isn't a Rabbim in it, but it's a caramelist. It's a Dirabon on Rishas Harabim. Did Rashi hold that you couldn't carry an empty? Well, you can't. So, uh, the Maram is assuming that Rashi must hold that. Hotza is not mutter entirely, mitoch, or, as we saw earlier, that if you're doing it for an usher party, it brings the usher back. Right? That was Tosavus' formulation on Dafyid Bays. But something like that. Um, where he says, heavy malach, shemoti rishus. And then he goes on to Tosavus. But the Maram says, it must be, the fact that Rashi says that this is about Ochel Nefesh, it must be you're doing a malacha, because otherwise... Ochel Nefesh is a rule in Malachos. But there is another possibility. And this is part of a very weird, striking shita that Rashi has. Um, that all the Achronim love. The Achronim are obsessed with this Rashi because, you know, Achronim love really, really lumdish. And sometimes the Rishonim. The Rishonim don't usually come up with a very, very formalistic as far as in the way the Achronim do. We're like, we tease it out of them. But sometimes the Rishonim just say things that are so, you know, abstract and conceptual, the Achronim will eat it up. So there's one Rashi like that. So this was the derech that I heard in the sugya from Ruluchenstein. So that's all. So Rulchan's in a different approach. He disagreed with Maharam. He said, it can't be. When you read Rashi, Rashi doesn't say, I mean, I, I understand what compelled the Maharam to say that in Rashi, but look at Rashi. Where does he say it? He says nothing. He just says, feeding fish is a violation of Ochel Nefesh. Why, in God's name, is feeding fish a violation of Ochel Nefesh? He doesn't say you cooked for your fish. He doesn't say you baked for your fish. He also doesn't say that the fish is a, it's a caramelist, which in the end is Dera Banan. He says it's a Dera problem of Ochel Nefesh. What case is there a problem of Dera Like, when is this happening? So, look at number 13. This is Rashi and Dapcha Vazayin Amid So Rashi says, he's talking about what to do with Chala Shenitmea on Yom Tov. Right, if you have challah, you're mafresh challah, so now it's kadosh, and then it becomes tame. So the halacha not only is you should burn it. Right, that's what we do with ours, right? We burn our challah, right? Your mafresh challah, we burn it because, or, you know, you could do what you do with truma and stuff like that, which is feed it to kohanim's animals because they can eat truma tmeya, they can eat challah tmeya, and that's what they do in Israel, the zoos, right? The zoos, they eat. Hmm. Right, you know this trick. 
I don't know if I still can talk about it last week, but he made a big deal of it last year. That in Israel, what they do is the zoos, the animals, are owned halachically by koanim. And the halacha is that the, that the animals of a kohen are allowed to eat truma, even truma tmeya. So in Israel, because the Rabbanut is mafresh on all the produce in the country, so normally they would just destroy it because the koanim are all tame. But if they sell the zoos to the koanim, so you have all this food that otherwise would go to waste, and they ship all this produce to the zoos, and they feed, because they're halachically the pets of some koan. So that's what Reis Lifkin did in his zoo, and that's what the, the biblical zoo does in Yerushalayim. Um, so Rashi says, what do you do with the with chalash and nitma? So Rashi says, Einaru in the koan hayom, da so Rashi says, well, on Yom Tov, you can't, the Kohen can't do anything with it. Why? Because he can't eat it because it's Aser, right? It's Chala Tmea. You can never eat it. Now, what are the other things a Kohen can do with his Truma? So we mentioned one of them is burn it, and he can use it for fuel. Right? You're allowed to take Truma or Chala Tmea, and you're allowed to burn it for fuel if you want. The other is you're allowed to give it to your animals. Right? You're allowed to feed it to your animals like this. Like the biblical zoo or Rabbi Slifkin's zoo. Did he talk? Did he talk about a zoo at all? I was down south. I have an excuse. I don't know. I was. Mm-hmm. I, was, I, was, I, was I He okay. talked about the parrot that he has there that makes a brach on himself about being a wonderful creature. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that, that is that is a frog parrot. Wow. <laughs> Beyond that, he didn't say much about the actual zoo. Oh, okay. Anyways, so um, but here's the kasha that Rashi has is well. Why don't you, if you have chalatme on Yom Tov, why don't you just feed it to the Kohen's animals? What could be wrong with that? He's allowed to eat it. So he says, Vasaka, I understand why you can't burn it. Okay, you can't burn it. Great. Srevas Kachim is Aser. Olisita le Kalbo be Yom Tov Aser. You can't give it to your animal either. Now, why? So there's a cause there's that tells you you aren't allowed to do Havar, you aren't allowed to do Srefa. Sreifas kachem on Yom Tov. So that's why you can't burn the challah for fuel on Yom Tov. This is a You can't burn truma. You can't burn kachem on Yom Tov. But Rashi says you also can't feed the truma to your animal, the challah to your animal. Why? So he says, mm-hmm. You can't destroy kachem from the world on Yom Tov. And even to feed the the food to an animal, the kaimal on shein surf in kachim biyomtov. Why? Because we don't burn kachim on yomtov. The low tame adafka srefa. Don't tell me burning means burning because what's the word? The word isn't burning. It's mivair. Mivair has two meanings. Mivair either means fire or it means get rid of. It says. Don't tell me the only reason that you can't burn Kadshim on Yantif is because it's burning and it's Havara, not for Ochal Nefesh. No. Because the Gemara tells you that you can't even burn Shemin Chmeya, Chuma Chmeya in your candle. That's Litzorech. Everyone agrees for light is Ochal Nefesh. But you're not allowed to do it anyways, which means that you're not allowed to do it for a need. Still, not by shemen sreifa. Not by You can't destroy kadshem that's tamei on yom tov. And then he says the key. The Rachmana Achshava Lahavarasan. The Torah, by telling you it was Aser, deemed it significant. Because it says, in fire it shall burn. Hilkach Malachahi, and therefore it's a Malacha. But what does Rashi say? Havara. It should mean burning, but it doesn't. It means destruction. And anything which is halachically recognized as Permitted destruction is considered significant. And therefore, feeding your animal chala tmei on yom tov is aser, mishum havaraz kadshem, mishum sreifaz kadshem. Because if the Torah justified burning, sorry, getting rid of kadshem, that's tamay, by feeding it to your animal, that must mean that that act 
is halachically a malacha, even though it's not a malacha. But by the fact that, that the Torah recognizes it as a means by which you can destroy Trumor Kachim, that gives it significance and makes it a malacha. What does that have to do with Chulun? What? So, so Rulachantin said, well, now you understand Rashi. Because Lachem Veloliklavim means that feeding animals is a category of halachically significant but forbidden acts on Yom Tov. And Rashi tells you, feeding an animal is called Havara. That in a case where feeding an animal is called significant, he tells you, like I said, this is a very harmless Svara, but Rashi says it beferush, so like right? Really, I in a chanami, but he says it. You need to say it that abstractly instead of saying no, no. Instead of saying that it makes it equivalent to malacha, you can say that it makes uh, it makes um, it or makes it a significant act or something. No, 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 no. I'm not, I, I'm make it more concrete than say that it makes it equivalent to burning. It makes it's it right. A, makes it it's a category of burning and burning and burning is a malacha. Or something so, like that. So, right? Yeah. However, it either it makes it a significant usher act or it makes it cane burning or something. Whatever exactly Rashi is that's saying. A, that's a right? siyag on the siyag. So, but not siyag. He's saying no, it's doraisa. No, no, right. right. You think doraisa? No, it's not doraisa. The animal is not gutsy. What? Because he's not gutsy. It's not gutsy. No, because you find the lushan of beira also. Oh, no. No, no. Rashi is saying. No, so Rashi is saying that. No, so the ownership only makes a difference because Rashi says that Mamanafshah, either you hold... Fire that can go into your, into your neighbor's field or sending your exactly. animal free until your animal... The Shalach has to be your own. Right, right. Also right. Uses but the you're same not letting fire. Right, I mean, I'll, I'll come back to the linguistic point in a second. Let me just answer, let me answer Howie's question. So just, Howie's point was... Right, so the ownership issue is just that Rashi says Mamanafshah. If you hold that Ochel Benet... That Ochel, ne- Ochel Nevish doesn't include animals at all, so obviously it's us, sir. Then Rashi says, well, I, but what if you hold that Ochel Nevish does include animals? He says, no, it only includes your animals, but any animal that isn't yours or isn't Menzono Zalecha, then that act would be us, under Ochel Nevish, or the lack thereof. That's what all Rashi's saying, right? He's saying there's two possibilities. Either it's us, sir, or it's us, sir, if you don't, you aren't responsible for it. But either way, the point is it's outside of Ochel Nefesh explicitly. But you have the rest of the Mishnah, which says that for your animals, you can get them as Correct. So Rashi says, right, it, this Mishnah must hold like the position of, like this is like the Balamor, right? It must paskin like the position that Ochel Nefesh includes animals, but even that position will limit it to animals that belong to you. And therefore fish, you can't feed, and animals, you could feed, according to that position. Implied is if you held Ochel Nevis doesn't include animals, you couldn't even feed this, right? And that's what the Balmor assumes as well, right? That this Gemara is contingent on that. Now, what about Shreve's coach from the base Did they forget about that? No, the base Mikdash has its own rule, but you can't do Akhtar, you can't do Akhtar, right? You don't do Akhtar. Before, before they had base Mikdash, they had Bummas. There's a whole discussion of how that works in Shabbos. That's bombs. a discussion in, in Zvachim. And, no, Zvachim, no, Zvachim. Right? How exactly the Shabbos issues work in Bama's is a discussion at the end of Zvachim. So, like I said, Rashi Shita is sort of wild, but he says it explicitly. Like, this is not, <laughs> this is not some Akhar making some diuk. Like, Rashi is about ex- as explicit as you could possibly get. Now, the truth is, and this is coming back to David's point, is this play on words is actually relevant in many areas of Torah in sort of surprising ways. Just to rattle them off, I once, Yosef Bronstein and I, Yosef is one of the biggest Hamidei Chamim I know, hands down. So at some point we made a list of all the cases, all the times that we knew of in Shas and Poskim that this play on Lo Sivaru and the double meaning of Devar became important. So this is one of them. Um, another is um, the, the Minchas Chinuch Quotes the 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 um, Remy Nicholsberg, I think, somewhat me Nicholsberg, who has this fascinating svara. The Gemara says that you aren't allowed to administer punishment on Shabbos. Why? Because the Gemara says that it says Lo Sevaru Eish Bechol Moshvosechem, and one of the On Shebezdin is Sreifa, and from Sreifa we derive. That just like you can't do sreifa on Shabbos, you can't do any of the any punishment on Shabbos. So most Rishonim and Achronim understand that to mean it's a, it's like a heckish of sorts, right? Once or a giling milsa. Once you know you can't do sreifa, you also can't do other punishments. But the Rimi Nicholsberg says no. 
when the Gemara says, Lo sevaru eish bechol moshu sechem, it doesn't mean you can't do sreifa. It isn't playing on the meaning of the word havar et sreifa. It's playing on the word, uvi arta harami kirbecha. That the, the pasuk that describes when Bezdin gets rid of criminals is, you shall expunge evil from your midst. And we call it uvi arta. So Rimi Nicholsberg says, any punishment, even excommunication, which has no malacha at all, is usher because it's a kiyum of uviarta. And the halacha is lo, right, lo sevaru, that you can't do an act of beer, even one which doesn't have fire. That was one. That was two. Um, the third was the maram chalava, has in the first paragraph of. Uh, we had to like sort of spread our net very yeah, wide here, right, but the, right. Yeah. right, the Maram Chalava, yeah. right? All the Rishonim ask, why do you make the bracha val bir chametz on bedika? So most of the Rishonim say because it's a hachana for bedika. Uh, sorry, bedika is a hachana for beer. But he says no. When we say that you have to get rid of chametz al bir chametz, we don't mean burning. We mean getting rid of. Part of getting rid of is finding bedika is a kiyum of beer. There's another one in terms of um, the shita for Rabbeinu Tam. It's Machlok as we shown him, but Rabbeinu Tam shita in terms of what does Bir Shvias mean? Does Bir Shvias mean destroying or does it mean getting it out of your house? Right? Which is yet another application. But you see it here that Rashi thinks that lo, that this these, uh, this notion of lo sivaru doesn't mean don't burn. It means that any destruction is halachically assimilated in some sense into the Isra of Havar, that the two definitions play off of each other. So therefore, Vlachim Sin said, what you see is that what does Rashi probably hold? That Rashi is Lishitaso. It's a radical Shita, but this is not some Achronish Diuk in Rashi. Rashi says it as explicitly as you can. But this is why the Achron love this Rashi. They like, they celebrate and dance on this Rashi. They write on it. Everyone writes on this Rashi because it's so, so formal. But the truth is, it's not even the only time Rashi says it. This is one explicit, one implicit, but he has a third time where he says it. So you look at number 14, 15, 16. 14. Ra, the Gemara, in the, the case we just talked about, Bior Chametz. So the Gemara says, You have to get rid of right, leaven from your houses. Mayor of Yom Tov. You have to get rid of it before Yom Tov. So the Gemara says, You have to get rid of it before how do you know you have to get rid of it before Yom Tov? Maybe it means you have to get rid of it on Yom Tov. Talmud Lomar. No, the Pasuk tells you that when you shech the carbon Pesach, you can't have any chametz. Which tells you that by the time you enter the, the Zman of the Yishchita of the carbon Pesach, so meaning halfway through the day, on Pesach, Erev Pesach, you need to already get rid of your chametz. It's a Pesach. Vadayin chametz kayim. Don't shech the the carbon pesach while you still have chametz. Diver Rabbi Shmuel. That's the position of Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Kiva Omer. Rabbi Kiva says they're not tzarech. I don't need that. Harei Omer. Ach be Omer Rishon Tashbisu. So Ormi Batecha. It says that on the first day, get rid of of leaven from your house. Uksiv. And it says call malacha. Oh yase vahem that you can't do malacha. Umatzinu lehavara shiav malacha. And we know that Havar is an Av Malacha. Burning is an Av Malacha. So since you need to destroy Hametz, so then you need to, it must be that you destroyed it before Yantiv. So then the Gemara continues. Amar Rava, Shema Mino, Midi Rabbi Kiva, Klas. From Yikiva we derive three positions. Shema Mino, Ein Biro Hametz El Esrifa. The first thing is that Biro Hametz is only through burning. Shmamina Havar the Khalakatas and that Havar is its own Malacha. Ushmamina Alarmin Ho Vuhutro Havar Latar Hutra Nami Shalajak and we don't just matir havar across the board. So Rashi says that Diash Basa so behold over sphere lay Lukma Biyomta. He said why? Because if you could have gotten rid of Khamit in any way, so then Fairenu with our Akhar, get rid of it some other way. Yahilena Luklavim Ashana Yom, feed it to the animals or throw it into the sea. So Pineshua said, wait a second, I don't understand. Rashi thinks that feeding food to animals is Havara. So how can Rashi say that if you held that you were allowed to get rid of Khamit in any way, that you'd be allowed to feed it to animals? Shouldn't it be Havara? So the Pnei Yeshua says something very clever, and he says, no, be very careful on what Rashi said and what Rashi didn't say. What did Rashi say by Kadshim? When is feeding an animal called Havara? 
if Havara is the category you're trying to fulfill. It's a distraction. Mm -hmm. Right? Meaning if, really, what are your two options with Kachim, Srefa, or Havara Becholdavar? But what does that mean? That that Achilles Behema is replacing Srefa. If Achilles Behema is replacing a Malacha, so then it's Aser. But what happens if you say, Hashbasaso Becholdavar? So then you don't need burning. Mm -hmm. So then what is have, then what is Achilles Behema replacing? Nothing. Mm -hmm. It's just Achilles Behema. Right. So he says, Omnam Achalai Hiyu Nira Lili Yashev. Divadai bimide di ikur mitzvaso bisrefa. Dafka bin and she mush bas la gamre minaola. He said, if you think that really Bir Khamit is burning, because it needs to be destroyed from the world. <laughs> then you couldn't solve the problem by feeding it to a dog if you couldn't practically burn it. Because then you're transforming it into malacha. If you require beer, not burning, but you circumvent that problem by feeding it to animals, what are you really doing? You're just feeding it to animals as a replacement for burning. But that is called Srefa. That's Aser. So when does Rashi say that giving to an animal is called burning? That's Dechziv Ba'ish. When it says burn. That's when its destruction is a malacha. But if you think that you don't have to burn it, then you wouldn't learn it. This is all a limit from Nosa, which I cut out. But So then you don't have to destroy it from the world. Then it's not, there's no chiyuv of destruction. You just have to get rid of it so that you don't violate Bal Yeraya. So then you're not obligated because you don't have to destroy it. So then you can't say that the Torah turned it into Shreva. So what does the Pnei Yeshua point out? The Rashi doesn't say that feeding to animals is always a malacha. What does he say? It always depends on what is it replacing. And what is it replacing? What, how does the Torah view it? So he says, if it's Kadshim, since your options are burning it or giving it to an animal, that means that giving it to an animal replaces Havara. Memela, it's Aser. It's considered a Malacha. If you paskin, that the only way to get rid of Chametz is through burning, but you circumvent the problem by giving it to an animal, so that's Aser, because you're replacing burning by feeding it to an animal. If you think that the Isser of Chametz is just get it out of your Roshos, so the animal is incidental. But now bringing it back to our sugya, what does Rashi say? Rashi says, if you hold that there's an explicit pasuk that says, lochem velo liklavim, that means achilas behema is considered aser. It's a malacha. Right here it doesn't have to replace avar, it has to replace any malacha. And he says, yeah, because anytime the Torah tells you explicitly that there's a problem with feeding to animals, so then it becomes intrinsically a malacha. In the case of Kadshem, it becomes burning. In the case of Ochel Nefesh, simply feeding animals, because there's the Pasuk that tells you, Lachem velo Liklavim, so if you do it, Liklavim, that's a violation of Achasher Yachal Ochel Nefesh, who, Livado Yeyosa Lachem, that's the only thing you're allowed to do. But if it's, who, Livado, then anything which is not that is chashuv, according to the Torah, le'isur. And therefore, Rav Lachim suggested that that's, it's not what the Maram said. It's not that, that Rashi is telling you technically you can't feed the animal if you're going to violate a different malacha. This is Rashi lishitaso. That whenever the Torah goes out of its way to be machshiv, feeding animals, 
it becomes a malacha, it becomes havara, it becomes malacha, whatever you want to call it, just like he says by Kajim explicitly. And then with the Pinei Yeshua's edition of why he doesn't say it for Rabbi Akiva, is again, it's only when the Torah goes out of its way to give that chashivas to feeding animals, and that's how Rav Lechonsin understand understood the sheet of, uh, of Rashi, We're which is, like I said, really lumdish, but sometimes you can't help it, Rashi says it, I don't know, you know, there's nothing you can do, yeah. If we say that Rashi is saying on our Gemara that he does not hold by Ochal Nefesh for Behemoths. Which are not Mizonos and Alecha. Okay, how do you separate that Malacha then? Either you, so you're saying that if there is no Ochal Nefesh on animals, then why is there a distinction on those that are dependent upon So, like where Well, no, to? because the same way... Cooking for a Jew is mutter. Cooking for a Jew for tomorrow is usher. Right? Meaning, you can split. We split that all the time by Ochel Nevesh, right? It's a Jew today. So he says the same type of distinction what is exists by... the. So according to him, it's animals who are... Presumably, where does Rashi get this notion from? From one word. Lochem. Right? Hu levado yasa lochem. You can do it for you. Right. But if the animal doesn't need you... Then, he's, then even if you hold nefesh behema bimashma, it's not lachem. And once it's not lachem, it's not hu levado, right? It's not the only thing you're, right? The only thing you're allowed to do is that which is lachem. So he says, even if you hold nefesh behema bimashma, it's only yours. It's only mizonos and alecha, where you're needed to give it food. If not, then it's out of lachem. I assume that's where Rashi that's gets it from. the Gemara where it says, with Rabbi Yossi, lachem the those are clubbing that were under his ownership. Correct. Or, right. Okay. Correct. So the, no, no, no. So he's saying Mamanashach. He said, if you hold like Rosia Glili, there's no Kasha. According to Rosia Glili, it's also to feed any animals. Right. You're he says, but even according to Rabikiva, who says you can feed animals, Rabikiva will limit it to your animals, that Mazonos and Alecha, the animals that need you. If they don't need you, then even Rabbi Kiva, we moted Rosh Aglila, those animals are not until now. He's, he's, he's not poskening here, he's just telling you that this Gemara is Bain Rabbi Kiva, Bain Rabbi Yosef Aglili. On the other hand, the Balamor, the Balamor, at a certain level, seems to hold like Rashi, because he says that feeding animals, in order to matter feeding animals at all, you have to poskin that, you have to poskin Rabbi Kiva, not Rosh Aglili. Therefore, he derives from the fact that we can feed any animals that it must be we paskin like Rabbi Kiva that Ochel Benevish Bamadra. But that assumes Rashi's Ochel Nefesh Svara. Now, we haven't get to the how, gone how, to that the Balmor will read our Gemara, but he assumes like Rashi seemingly again he could he could read like Maram, right? That uh, you can't feed at. You can't feed animals only if there's a problem of a different malacha. But Pashtras, he holds like Rashi, is that there's an, a potential inherent problem with feeding animals. Rashi makes a distinction between Mizonos and Alecha or not. He presumably says no. If you hold animals or Rasser, it's all animals. If you hold animals or Mutter, it's all animals. So Mido Rashi Raisa. is saying that there are exceptions to Lachem. He's never holding like Rav Yossi Haglili. He's not weighing in one way or the other. He's saying this Mishnah works Bainler, we keep a Bainler was Aglili. According to Riosi Aglili, it works because obviously it's us. Or according to Bikiva, it works because even if animals which are Alecha, Mizonos and Alecha, it's permitted. Animals which are not, everyone agrees is us. So he said, right, he's, and this Rashi, is, he's, he's hedging, right? He's not, he's not telling you one way or the other. But that was how Rav Sain explained uh, Rashi. This is Rashi Lishitasa, which is a bit of a. Um, Admittedly, quite a cheddish, but on the other hand, as I said, sometimes Rashi, sometimes Rashi gives it, you know, gives you these extremely conceptual constructs. Um, okay, uh, we're not going to have time for too much more, but let's look at, let's just get a toast first. This Rashi is a bit complicated. Oh well, um, I look back at my notes. I was like, you know, because the first thing I did, I was looking at this Rashi. I'm like, oh, this is definitely connected to that other Rashi. And I'm like, I don't think I came up with that myself. I look back at my notes. I'm like, no, I didn't come back with it myself. I have <laughs> said that. I have my notes. Gah, gah, you know, okay. So at least I remembered that. Fine. So, uh, so Tosvos, on the other hand, doesn't like this whole thing. Tosvos said, what are you talking about? I don't know what's going on here. But this is so, so off base. 
So Dozo says, Peter Rashi, the Afal Gav did Ochel Nefesh. Um, sorry, that's the wrong Rashi. Next one, second Rashi. Ain't nothing in Amazonas. Peter Rashi, the Amazonas, a lot of the Ochlem, Isev, and Imsev, and Mayim, and Ochlem, Afar of Dolim, Ochlem, Akadarim, Vafilm, and the Shari, Machesh, Ochel, Chal Nefesh, the Mashma, Phil Behemoth, the Chomakum, Dugim, the whole, the Amazonas, and the Lechab. So the second one, second one, second one. Second one. I started the first one, then I realized it's the wrong one, second one, second one. So Frisch just quotes Rashi, fine. Five lines in, and he says, Vitema. So, what are you talking about? He said, the Gemara goes through a whole discussion. A big, a big B bar, a small B bar. He says, So, I get it. That helps you for Tzedah, for hunting. El Mizonos, my Taratzta. But isn't the Gemara trying to explain the Sira by Nosen Mizonos and Nosen Mizonos? If, according to Rashi, there's no connection between Clause 1 and Clause 2, meaning Clause 1 is about the Isra of Tzeda, Clause 2 is an Isra of a whole lumdish discussion about Ochal Nefesh, then why does answering the contradiction of the Gemara for Tzeda, it doesn't say anything about right, Rashi? The whole discussion about Mizo- of Nosen and Lefine Mizonos has nothing to do with the first clause. So how can you use the answer to Miyashi of the Stira? So he says it must be that clause one and clause two are connected. He says, He said there's there's a contradiction in terms of food as well. That here we say ain't no and Amazonas, and there we say no Snuffin Amazonas. So when the Gemara says Habibi and it implies that if you're allowed a fish you're allowed to feed. And if you're not allowed to fish, you're not allowed to feed. But according to Rashi, they're not connected clauses. Right? The f- hunting, is, the fishing is about one thing, and the other one is about a whole fish, independently. Maybe, but maybe the, the, the size of the beaver does make a difference in terms of the fresh and spur also. So Rashi says explicitly not, because Rashi says all fish can eat grass on the bottom of the... Um, now you could say uh, maybe a small beaver doesn't have enough. It's like the fish tank, right? Doesn't have enough. Right? You could you could come up with a new kimta, right? And say, yeah, what Rashi will say is no. It's a practical difference. A small beaver doesn't have enough, you know, grass, and it's like a fish tank. And even I would be moved that by a fish tank or a small beaver, you'd be allowed to, or something like that. You know, Hanami. But Tosas is right that that's yeah. You, know, you have to come up with some ukimtas to defend Rashi. Uh, yeah, you, you can do it. We can definitely defend Rashi with some ukimtas. But the simplest understanding is that clause one is connected to clause two. Therefore, he says, "Lakach nira li the hub talia baha." They're connected. Eat say the muteres muter nami liten the name mizonos. If you're allowed a fish, you're allowed a feed. Vahachi perusha. Why is that true? Here's how the Mishnah goes. Very simple. You can't fish midaraisa, and if you can't fish, you can't feed because feeding is the first step of catching. And therefore, whenever you can't fish, you can't feed gzera that you might fish them. But if you're allowed to fish them, you're allowed to feed them. Right? Very simple. It tells us a very glot read of the Mishnah is. And that's why one is contingent on the other. Whenever you're allowed to fish, so you're allowed to feed. Whenever you're not allowed to fish, you're not allowed to feed. And that's why any stira that can be resolved for fishing can be resolved for feeding. So however you answer for one, you answer for the other because they contingent on each other. Then it's just exam. It's exera. It's exera derabana. Right? He says that's it. It's very simple. It's exera derabana. It's exera mishum tzeida. Um, so he says, the Mishnah is saying admittedly I still have a problem because it sounds like here that where um, where you fish where it's usher to fish it's even usher to throw food at them Right, that's what it sounds like, that you can't give them food no matter what, even if you're not coming close to them, right? You could, once you're saying it's like Zayda Mishum Tzayda, I can distinguish there's a difference between coming close to them and giving them food and throwing it from a distance where I'm not there, right? You could have come up, but the Gemara doesn't. Um, 
the Yishlomer does a mayir, the Shabbos, the Chomer, the Chol Nevesh, Aser, the Shaykh, the Migzer, Shem Ayikach, Mehen, the Chacham, Mehen, the Yom Tov, the Chol Nevesh, Mutter, Gazrina, Dilmak, Shita, Mazonos, Shem Ayitzu, Bahem. He said, look, on Shabbos, I could hear you making a distinction, um, because on Shabbos, no one's going to come to fish. So we, we can be dafka more mekil in terms of when we tell you you can't feed. But he says on Yom Tov, because so many Ochel Nefesh things are mutter, right, we need more xeros, right? It's one of those times when Yom Tov becomes more chamor. So he says in Shabbos, um, it's true that it says that you're allowed to throw to them. But he says that's Shabbos, because on Shabbos, okay, you throw food to them. What? <laughs> Right. Have, uh, have, right. Uh, well, we haven't got to the practical, but he's saying theoretically, where I can be open to more kulas, and maybe throwing would be mutter on Shabbos, but on Yom Tov I won't because of gezera. But Pachodu Yuter tells us his read is quite smooth here, right? He just says, "Look, it's gezera." The first clause tells you you're not allowed to fish because it's seida, and for whatever reason, seida is we've talked about. If it's usher to fish. So, because in Yom Tov we're so worried that you're going to get caught up and you're going to think everything that Ochel, is Ochel Nefesh esque so, is so mutter. So, going to tell us even if you have a tank, you might not be able to do it? No, it, no, it's fine because if it's a Bibar Katan, that's exactly his point. The Gemara says that if it's a Bibar Katan and a tank is for sure. Any, anything, where you shouldn't Ah, so no, he says, he says, no, he says, but if it's a Bibar Katan, right, so what? Well, you always yeah, have to ask with their abundance. You have to. What? You're saying there's no way to say that by Bibar. Correct, by right, Bibar Katan. But, but if it's still some type well, of no, action that's similar to... Correct, but he, said, but he says, but there I'm not... So you're going to have to write, say that what he's, what he's going to say is, look, Bib Bibar Katan, you're allowed to fish. If you're allowed to fish, why am I going to say you're not going to feed? What's, what's going to happen? You're going to end up fishing. You're allowed to fish. Throwing when you're not allowed to fish is a problem because you're going to be involved in fishing. Right. Right, he's saying there's a difference between something which... Where it might lead to an usher act of tzeda, even if it's far removed, rather than one which might lead to a mutter act of tzeda. I don't have to make exer against mutter acts of tzeda. So that's right, Tosus is going to say. But Tosus's read is really glot, right? Rashi has these ukimtas. You're going to have to say, okay, whatever. We're not really related, but they're sort of related because maybe I could come up with a case where you have a bibar that it's so small that it's that they have no food and therefore it's a, it's mizonos on alecha again and if it's mizonos on alecha so according to Rabbi Kiva then you'd be allowed to do it or something like or you'd have to come up with some ukim that you could that's what you could say but Tosf is very smooth Tosf just says look it's exera mishum it's exera mishum. Um, Tzeda, so when Tzeda is Aser, so then Achila, ma, then Machila is Aser, and Tzeda is Mutter, so then it's Mutter as well. Okay, so that's the Shita of, uh, of Tosvos. Um, okay, I think we're going to have to stop there. We didn't actually do as few sources, it seems, because you were up to only source three, but we didn't really, so we did the, the most complicated part of the sheet, smack in the middle, right, 12 to, uh, to 16, um, which was definitely the, mo- the most complicated conceptual part. What we're going to see next week is a few things. We're going to see the Ramban's retort to the Balamor, who divorces this whole thing from Ochel Nefesh, um, and then we're going to see the other ways to read this Mishnah. We've seen two so far. One is that it's a Ochel Nevesh problem, and two is that it is a uh, it is a Gzera Mishum Tzeda problem. Um, the third, fourth possibilities are going to be Mukta and related issues, like different variations of the Mukta theme or the Tircha theme. Um, that's what we're going to see next week. Like I said, I don't know if we're actually going to... I don't, feel like I actually need to read the Halakha Lamaisa thing, but I just figured if you're curious and how this plays out in terms of pets, I gave you two pages. You can look at the whole article if you want, and that's where you can see whether it's mutter to own pets, what pets. I don't want to get into that discussion. It's not our Gemara, but, uh, but I gave you the link to the article, and you can read Ray uh article on it um, if you're interested in those topics. I mean, I'll go over this. Um, okay. But my difficulty here is with Rashi, it looks like the Rasha is Rabbi Yossi Klili of our Mishnah, and the Seifa is Rabbi Akiva. Rashi is saying, well, yeah, or or Afilu. Uh, the Rasha is even, or, yes, is okay. even, yeah, it, yes. I mean, Rashi is playing a bit here, but okay. It's a hard read for many reasons. In a Hanami, there's many, there's many reasons. One is this question of who is the authors and gets complicated. And the second is, as Tosvos notes, you're, it's a lot of ukimtas you're going to have to come up with to right. defend him in the Gemara. In a Hanami, Tosvos is very smooth here, and the truth is that Rashi himself 
This is his shita here, but the, the mukta svara isn't just another rishon. It's Rashi. Rashi and Shabbos doesn't understand the sugya this way at all. Rashi and Shabbos, the bala member that talks about mukta and related issues. So Rashi himself, you know, I don't know which one he wrote first. I have no idea. Um, but okay. Could you throw food into water? Forget fish. Pretend there's no fish, or we don't know the the fish are there. Can you just throw food into water? 